Hi everyone. So welcome to lecture number six of counting. So we were we are doing data science and AI complete data course, and we are discussing counting. And uh, so lecture number six, and we will continue discussing combination with repetition. We started it in the last class, and we said that ki whenever we have n objects and we have to pick r at a time, and repetition is allowed, then it comes under the uh, category of combination with repetition. Are you? Uh, Always remember combination with is selection, so arrangement is not important. Just the selection is. So always map it to like cricket example or something like have a mapping, okay? So and if arrangement is there, we will see it later. It is permutation with repetition, okay? We will see that as well. So but permutation is repetition with repetition will be very simple problem. We will solve it like in this lecture only. Uh, the more difficult problem to solve is combination with repetition because always counting the number of selections is slightly difficult. Because there we tend to over count. Whenever arrangement is important, that problem can be solved like by making r spaces, and you will have options to choose. Okay, that is easier to solve. I will tell you in this lecture. Okay, but combination or selection problem is slightly trickier, and that's why like I emphasize more on combination of repetition or selections. Okay, cool. So let's continue. We have already seen that the number of combinations of n objects taken r at a time. That this problem will be difficult. Always map it to an equation. So you have n objects taken r at a time. So you have you take x one of first object, x two of second object. Uh, sorry, yeah, x two of second object, and so on up to x n of nth object. And total number of objects you have to take is r. So number of non-integral solutions, the uh, non-negative integral solutions to this equation is equal to your you draw on the r minus one boxes. And you insert n minus one sticks, so you will get n separations, and total number of boxes left will be r. So this is the number of solutions to this equation, okay? And this is also equal to n plus r minus one choose r. We know that like a solution is equal to k evictions, and this formula comes out to be this. We have seen this. So now let's solve some examples. So the first example is: In how many ways can hundred identical candies? Be distributed among seven children. Okay, so this is a different way of forming that equation. Okay, uh, so always uh, combination repetition might not be as it looks. So the standard way to write is like n objects and take r at a time with repetition allowed. But the problem can be formulated in a different way like this. So that's why I told you not to remember formula. Always map it to equation. So you have to distribute hundred identical candies. So let's say this is a candy box. And it has hundred candies, exactly hundred candies, and they are all the same, identical candies. And you have to distribute among seven children. Now, now seven children are different here. This is the first child, second, and you have seven children. And you have to distribute these hundred identical candies to this. So you might be unfair. Some child like might be like you don't want to give any candies to them. That is okay. There no condition is mentioned. So you can assume that. Some of the children might get zero candies also, so it's the standard problem. So let's say first child gets seven candies, C two candies, and so on. The seventh child gets seven candies. So you have to add up to distribute total hundred candies, right? So you just have to find the number of solutions to this equation, where all C one, C two, and C up to C n can be greater than equal to zero. So we already know how to do this. Don't remember the formula. How to do that? If you have to make seven partitions, you have to insert six sticks. So you have to create hundred and six boxes, and you have to insert six, six sticks like in them, so that you will have seven partitions. So the number of solutions to this equation is hundred and six C six. You can go with the formula as well. N is equal to seven. R is equal to hundred. N plus R N plus R minus one. Choose N minus one. So there are hundred and six. C six ways. It will be a large number. I'm not calculating it, but this is the answer. Okay. So now let's move to the next problem. In how many ways can we fill a bucket with hundred balls of seven colors? Again, a really different way to solve it. Okay, like form the problem. Previously, it was hundred identical candies, right? Hundred identical candies and seven different children. Here it is. Hundred. Uh, here there are. Hundred balls. Okay, so you have to fill a bucket. There is only one bucket. This is your bucket, and you have to fill it with hundred balls of seven different colors. 
and here you can assume that all balls of one particular color are same right so you have ball with seven colors and here also nothing is mentioned so you can assume there is an infinite supply of all the balls nothing is mentioned so you will assume right you will assume that you have 100 balls of red color or any color you have infinite supply so basically there are seven colors let's say a red green and so on okay so let's say with your anything right let's say there are seven colors violet indigo blue green yellow orange and red and you have to fill a bucket with 100 balls of these colors so you will have a few white balls you will have a few yellow balls you will have like balls with different colors okay okay so you can have red balls or blue balls or green balls you will have 100 balls but of different colors okay in this so basically what you want to do you can have all 100 violet balls you can have all 100 red balls also and you can have some combinations like you can have 20 violet balls plus 20 indigo balls and so on like five red balls but their sum should be equal to 100 because you have to fill 100 balls in this bucket so what is it so let's say you have x1 balls of the first color x2 balls of the second color and so on you have x7 balls of the seventh color you have x7 balls of the seventh color and total number of balls you want is 100 always map it to equation it will be very simple okay and you have to solve this equation and you might pick zero balls of any color right so yeah can you have to solve the problem like in the last problem we also had the same equation so the number of ways in which you can do it is 106 c6 okay or you can apply the formula as well so this is what you get okay let's move to the next example this is a problem which i gave you as a homework right in the last lecture in how many ways can 50 be represented as a sum of three natural numbers we already solved uh, so we have solved solved it for three uh, whole numbers whole number are written equal to zero that was simpler so there the equation was x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 50 and x1 x2 x3 was were all three were written equal to zero this was the equation which we already solved and the, the answer would be 52 c2 but now The problem is slightly different. So you have to represent 50 as a sum of three natural numbers. Okay. So here the equation changes a little bit. Okay. So here the equation is this. But since natural numbers are greater than equal to one, so x1 has to be greater than equal to one, x2 has to be greater than equal to one, and x3 has to be greater than equal to one. Okay. So try to solve it. I'll give you the solution now. So whenever question like this comes. Try to map it to whole number problem. Try to map it to whole number problem. How? X one can be greater than equal to one, right? So there is a standard trick to do it. I I want to map it to a problem to a different space. I want to map it to a different space in which the variables are greater than equal to zero, not greater than equal to one, because that I can solve. So why not write x one as one plus a? I am writing x1 as 1 plus a. Basically, what I am trying to do is, since x1 has to be greater than equal to 1, I am giving one like I am making sure that x1 will be at least 1. So I am I will basically write x1 as 1 plus a, and I will write x2 as 1 plus b, and I will write x3 as 1 plus c. Why? This way, I am ensuring that x1 is at least 1. Now a can be greater than equal to 0. So if a is seven, x one will become eight. If a is zero, x one will become one, right? So this way, I am making sure that x one is at least one. X two is at least one, and x three is at least one. So basically, I am writing x one as one plus a, x two as one plus b, and x three as one plus c. This will work with any value. If x three happens to be equal to five, I will write x three as five plus c. So what will this equation become? So write it this way. This equation is will become three plus a plus b plus c. One 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 is three. A plus B plus C is equal to fifty. And now consider this. So now this is magical, right? X. Now since x one is greater than equal to one, and I am written, I am writing x one as one plus a. So it becomes one plus a greater than equal to one. So it means a has to be greater than equal to zero. This is what what I wanted. So this equation is equivalent to this equation. A, B, and C have to be greater than equal to zero. Right, 
and this equation I already know how to solve. Basically, I am giving one 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 to x one x two x three already. So now fifty becomes forty seven only, right? So this equation is nothing but a plus b plus c is equal to forty seven. And now a b c can be anything. It is equal to zero. So this how to solve forty seven and like two partitions of forty nine c two. If you create forty nine boxes, insert two sticks, you will get like all the different ways in which you can solve this problem. Okay. So there are forty nine c two ways in which fifty can be represented as a sum of three natural numbers. How to solve it? Always combination. So like always go with combination first. Forty nine into forty eight <coughs> upon two. This is forty nine c two. It will be one one seven six. You can check. Okay. So coming to the next problem. So right now in in these problems we assumed in these problems we assumed that we had an infinite supply of objects. When I said that you have n n objects and you take r at a time, I assumed that I have infinite supply of all the objects. Infinite means like I don't want infinite. I need at max r. I will not take r plus one anyway. But I was assuming basically that I have what what I will need. So when I said that I need the number of solutions to this equation x one plus x two plus x three is equal to let's say ten, right? I assume that x one I have in, enough supply of x one. I have at least ten x ones. I will not need more than ten, but that's what infinite means here, right? So sometimes it is possible that you are not given an infinite supply of x one x two. So it is restricted. So the only equation right now, the condition was x one has to be greater than equal to zero, right? What if they add one more condition? That x one should be less than equal to five, right? X one cannot go beyond five. You don't have an infinite supply. Instead, you have a limited supply. You only have five x ones, and so on. So that is a slightly trickier problem. And the most complicated versions of these problem can be solved only using inclusion and exclusion. So we will need both combination and repetition and inclusion and exclusion. So we will. See inclusion and exclusion in the later part of this course in the same playlist. But for now, this problem can be solved without inclusion and exclusion. That's why I added it here. Okay. More complicated variations we will solve later. So right now, this problem. Let's see. A girl has choose four items from a bucket which contains three red, three green, and four blue balls. It contains three red, three green, and four blue balls. Okay. And we have to pick four items out of it, four balls out of it, right? So had it been we had an infinite supply, this problem would have been simpler. Let's say you are taking R red balls and G green balls and D blue balls. So you have to take four balls total, and we have an infinite supply. You just have to solve this problem where R G B can be greater than equal to zero. So then the number of solutions would have been sixty two, right? But now this is not the problem. So here, here the like like here there is a constraint. The constraint is you only have three red balls, you only have three green balls, and you have four blue balls. So basically, here R can be anything between zero and three. R can be anything between zero and three. G can be anything between zero and three. B can be anything between zero and four. This is the constraint that we are adding. Okay, we we are not having an infinite supply. We are having a limitation on total number of objects that we have. See, uh, let's solve this problem first, assuming that we have an infinite supply. We know that there are sixty two possible solutions to this equation, right? N plus R minus one choose N minus one. So sixty two becomes six into five upon two, which is fifteen. There are fifteen solutions, different solutions to this equation. But we do we we cannot so like we have to eliminate all those choices which are exploiting these conditions, right? There are only two cases in which this condition is not satisfied. Think about it. Since that, we'll see blue balls. We already have four. We don't care. Like we we will not need more than four four balls anyway, right? So like uh, if the solution is like zero comma zero comma four, four red, four green, and four blue, it is allowed because we have four blue balls. But this solution is not allowed. Four comma zero comma zero. Why? Because we don't have four red balls. We only have three red balls. Four red balls is not allowed, and this solution will be a part of these fifteen solutions. So there are only two solutions which are prohibited. What are those? In which we are taking all four red balls 
and in which we are taking all four green balls. These two solutions are not allowed. Otherwise, everything is allowed if you see the conditions, right? More complex problems. See here, it was easier. There were only two uh, options to be eliminated. Sometimes it will be very large. So that we will solve using inclusion exclusion. That's a different principle. But for now, we among these fifteen choices, only two are prohibited. So we will remove those. So we have thirteen possible ways or thirteen possible solutions to this question. Okay. I hope you got it. Okay. I'll also write in the comment section if you have problems in any of these questions. I'll like read them and answer them in the comment section itself. And also, I will be having live doubt solving and problem solving sessions. You can ask them there. Cool. So this was all about combination with repetition. So we we are selecting objects, R objects out of N objects. The repetition was allowed. Only selection. The order was not important. In which order I am taking that was not important. The only thing important was how many X one items I am taking, how many X two, and so on. Right. But now we can have permutation with repetition as well. Okay. What is permutation with repetition? Again, we have an object. We are taking R at a time, but order is important. Order is important, and now the problem has become much easier. You will see. Okay. So what what happens is you have n different type of objects. You have object one, object two, object three. You have n different type of objects, and we have we have n choices each time. So basically, what what we want to do is we have r places to fill. We have r places to fill, and the order is important. So basically, you can take any object for the first place. You can have, let's say, the seventh object here. You can have again the seventh object here. You can have the nth object here. You can have the first object here. You can have the second object here. So for every place, you have n options. Fill the first place and fill the second place. You have n options and fill the third place. You have n options. Rule of product and and and. So it will become n to the power r. See, this was a very simpler problem because here the order was important. So basically. Uh, if you have so like we saw the a problem right uh, in the in the previous lecture you have a b c d and you have to fill three places in the previous lecture we saw it was combination with repetition how many selections of three objects are possible from a b c d only selection so here a a b and a b a were same i told you because both are two a's and one b but in permutation these two are different so it becomes a very easier problem because How do you solve it? You just take three options, like three three places, and for every every such place, you have four different options: A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, and A, B, C, D. Take any one of them; it will be different permutation. So it will be four Q. So permutation with repetition is like very simpler problem. If you have n n objects, and you have to fill r places, you have n options for every one. So n to the power r. So it becomes n to the power r. Okay. In combination, it was n plus r minus one. Choose n minus one. Cool. So I hope you got it. Uh, in the next lecture, we will solve a few problems on permutation. Basically, whatever we have discussed: permutations, combinations, factorial, with repetition, without repetition, everything. Okay, so we will solve a few problems so that it will be more clear. Cool. Thank you. Bye bye.